Hi, I'm uh, João Ferreira and I'm the Artistic Director of Queer Lisboa and Queer Porto, both Queer Film Festivals happening in Portugal in September and October. Well, you're working for a Queer Film Festival, so my first question is, why is there a necessity for Queer Film Festivals? Well, um, because there are, this is, Queer Festivals are more and more the only way that Queer Film reaches an audience. Um, it, there are more and more queer productions and uh, the, the commercial, um, commercial cinemas and commercial distribution is more and more narrow. So these films have no chance of going into, into the circuit. And also um, some years ago we thought that uh, the DVD and the VOD market would somehow cater and uh, probably be a menace for these festivals, but the truth is the opposite is, is happening. They are not uh, responding to that request. And, uh, and because the thing is, a, a, a film has to be watched in a big screen with other people. And uh, so it's, it's still important to have that, uh, that experience. So queer festivals are still important. It's not just a gathering. It's, um, a f it can be a gathering of a community, but it's also a gathering for the experience of watching a film that you can only watch in that, in that festival circuit. What does your festival, your queer film festival, specialize in? Is there another spe speci specialization within the scope of queer films, or is it very general queer? No, it's, it's, it's a very general festival. E, um, I mean, we, we screen from very commercial titles to very experimental film. Um, and also, our, even our competition reflects on that a little bit. Just to give you an example, we have a feature film competition. We also have a film school competition. So we're promoting the work of very young filmmakers, doing most of them their first film in a school co context. Uh, we also have a section called Queer Art, which is dedicated to more experimental film. So we pretty much try to, to broaden the horizon. It's, it's all an idea of... Um, we, we look everywhere for these films. We're not just looking inside a certain circuit or just because a film is um, labeled as uh, queer or LGBT. Um, we're not, not just looking for those films, we're looking at every film and then maybe we'll find something out there and we do, <laughs> lots of them, to, for the festival. You said you're looking everywhere for the films, so how important is networking then for the queer films? It's very important, I mean, um, it's important not only, of course, going to festivals and looking at the programs, I mean, like probably in Ali, but, um, but also to talk to talk to people, to, to talk to fellow programmers, talk to friends who've been traveling and may have been to a festival and saw something or heard about a film that's being produced or uh, that, that's done but nobody's seen it yet. So it, networking is, is very, very important. Although, I mean, uh, right now, it, access to information is much more easier, of course, with, uh, with the internet, but um, word to mouse, 15 years ago was really, really important. And that's how we got to know a lot, of the, a lot of the films, and it still is. And, well, do you also have a part where it comes to having an archive of queer movies? Do you only screen them, or do you also try to keep them in your archive, keep them alive after the festival? Um, we, we did that very specifically for some Portuguese films from the 1970s that we, um, we met a, a filmmaker who did those films and they were closed inside a room. And so we did di digital copies of those films and now we're keeping them. And uh, since then, uh, many festivals have screened them. So uh, that's, I mean, we, if there's a Portuguese film that um, needs to be taken care of in, in that way, we, we will certainly, uh, do so, but that's not our our um, um, your main task. Yeah, that's not our main task. I mean, but but it, but of course it's it, it is important, and we do it if we if, uh, if we have to. Yeah. Now, if we sort of try to look into the future, what do you think will be the the challenges over the next years for queer film festivals? 
I think the challenges are always new technologies and how to, how to adapt to. And um, also um, new audiences. I mean, that's been a challenge for us these past 20 years. The, what, what the audience was looking for 20 years ago is not the same that it's looking for now. So we have to, so that's why it's all, all also important to have different generations working on the festival and uh, in, in the team, also programming, because um, certain topics that for me, I've seen a lot of it worked on film, for a younger generation, maybe it's going to be the first time they're going to they're going to see it. So that's something that's important that you that you always um, keep up with with what's being done. And uh, when I when I was talking about new technologies, it's um, where where is the internet going? Where is where is uh, where are all these new formats going? That's something a festival always has to has to adapt. But I'm 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 very positive about the future of film festivals because I remember some 10 years ago discussing uh, if they would still exist in 10 years time. And the truth is they've been growing. So uh, it's um, yeah, not like this bird that's looking for <laughs> dead, <right>. dead meat. <laughs> not for us, I hope. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. And well, enjoy your day at the programmers meeting. Thank you. <laughs>